Hey everyone, CPO here, and in this video, I'm gonna be doing two things. I'm gonna be installing these RS7 spark plugs in the 2019 Golf R here, and uh, I'll explain why I'm doing that, and then I'll also go through my process in case maybe there's some tips in there that might be useful if you haven't done this sort of thing very much. And secondly, I will be unplugging the rear O2 sensor. And that's particularly important if you have a Cobb tune or an EQT or other Cobb based tune and an aftermarket downpipe. I'll explain why and show you how that works when I get to that part in the video. Anyway guys, let's get these spark plugs changed. All right, first, uh, just know that I'm not a professional mechanic and I may do things a little bit old school, but I do know that these spark plugs need to be gapped to 0 0.024 uh, inches. I'll explain all the details on that here in a second. And they come out of the box at 0 0.026. So what I need to do is close that gap down a little bit. Now there's a lot of different ways to do this. I'm kind of old school. Uh, I use the tap it on a uh, wooden uh, countertop method and just slowly work my way into it. And that works 99% of the time. You're just making very small changes, check gap uh, and just gently tap. If you tap too far and you close it up smaller, you can use the spark plug tool to open it back up. Just be really careful with that center electrode and uh, and make sure that you don't damage that. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, there's probably other ways. I know there's a special tool you can use to close the gap. But once I get it to 0.24, I'm good to go. I do this on all four plugs. Now, 0 0.024, by the way, uh, as you can see here. Uh, what you don't want to do is use one of these uh, style gappers because it will damage the electrode. All right. So pulling the cover off, I'm gonna pull off these uh, four uh, top bolts. If you have one that sticks, I just use a wrench to hold the bottom down. Uh, what you don't wanna do is spin that uh, ground cable around. So the wrench ended up coming in handy on three of the four. There is a little technique to break it without a wrench, but uh, I just grab a wrench, it's pretty easy. Then um, I remove these uh, connectors and it's basically pushing the tab push the connector the opposite direction of the, how you're pulling it out. You're sort of gonna sort of compress it first and then pull it out and that'll free it up, usually pretty easy. Once I get all four of those cleaned up, uh, then I will um, sort of get them moved out of the way. So you can see here, if I free up this uh, little connector here in the harness, I can get a little more room to make some clearance. And don't worry, I'll explain why I'm putting in RS7 plugs here in a second. Uh, and then uh, I can go ahead and remove those studs. These are 10 millimeter, by the way, both the, uh, the nuts and the studs are 10 millimeter. So I'm just zipping those off uh, and they're not load bearing or anything. Then to remove the coil, basically I just get all my fingers around there and pull straight up and sort of wiggle and pull. Um, there are special tools. I've seen some DIY stuff where people are using zip ties. Um, my car is fairly new, it's a couple years old, so they come out, you know, pretty easy. So I don't know if you're gonna have a problem or not, but this is my method of getting them out. And like I said, it works. And yeah, there's actually a satisfying pop when they, uh, they come out and uh, that's kind of cool. But anyway, yeah, just get those four. And you'll notice I work systematically from one side to the next. So I always do, in this case, left to right. Now I'm using a spark plug uh, socket and I'm breaking free those spark plugs. And once you get them broken free, um, they come out by hand pretty easy. So uh, it's, you know, pretty quick work. Oh, uh, let's talk real quick while I'm doing this. Let's talk about why. So. Uh, EQT tuning is, uh, oh yeah, here's my old ones. They look in good shape. I check all of my plugs just to make sure everything looks good when I remove them. Anyway, EQT tuning has a, has a frequently asked questions uh, section on their website that says, hey, what's your recommendation for spark plugs? And what they say is for a uh, IS-20 or IS-38 turbo, at any stage of tune, they recommend going one step colder in spark plugs and specifically gap to 0.024 inches. Now, uh, and then they have a list of recommended uh, plugs, uh, the NGK91006, aka the Audi RS7 plugs, tend to be pretty popular. They also have a 
different uh, code. Uh, they go by SIL FER 8C 7ES, same part number. I got those on Amazon. There's a link in the description. All right, once I get the plugs out, I use a light to look into the top of the cylinder just to look for anything weird like oil collecting or anything like that. But when you put your sp new spark plugs in, use the spark plug socket, but don't put it in all the way. Otherwise, you're going to have a hard time getting the socket out uh, if you don't have one that locks really well to the extension, which is how mine are. I just put it on the very end of the rubber just to hold it, and then uh, it allows me to get it into... Uh, the little hole there and then start it by hand. And I do all of these by hand. I tighten them all the way till I feel resistance. Uh, and then I'll, I'll torque them down with a torque wrench. But that's my number uh, one tip right there is, is uh, a lot of times if you put the spark plug all the way into the spark plug socket, um, you'll actually have a hard time getting your socket out. It'll stick to the plug. And you can probably use some silicone grease or something like that, but it's just easier not to put them in all the way. Then uh, when you torque them down, it's better to not use the spark plug socket. I'm too lazy to go find a normal uh, deep socket, so I just pop out the little rubber insert out of my spark plug socket, and now it's just a standard deep socket. So, yeah, that works for me. Your mileage may vary. And then I torque these down to the specs, which I think were 30 newton meters. It's not very much. And so, yeah, I just torque all those down. Again, working left to right constantly. Uh, I torque everything down at once. I know some people uh, install torque, install torque, install torque. I like to torque everything down in one shot. And then you just put your little rubber insert back in and bam, you've got a spark plug socket again. Just like that. All right, so uh, then these uh, go back in place. Same thing, left to right, push them into place, uh, get them seated. And then I like to put in the studs uh, at the at the same time, just to make sure everything lines up. I just feel more comfortable doing it that way. So uh, you could essentially, if you wanted, go in and put in all of these from, from start to finish and then go put in all the studs. I know I've seen a lot of people do that, but I just do it this way. And as you can see with this particular um, one, like I had to get it sort of tweaked a little bit. And it turns out there was some pressure from the, uh, the wiring harness, the plug, was putting a weird side pressure on it. And so once I got that sort of moved out of the way, I could get everything sort of put in correctly. All right, so finishing putting these in. And uh, yeah, there are some other plug options, by the way. Um, your mileage may vary. I went with the most common and popular, and again, recommended by my tuner. I don't do things just because half the internet says I should do them, uh, but this one was recommended by the tuner. And like 75% of the internet said I should do it. So uh, anyway, once I get all that done, I go through and um, plug these things back in. And you should hear a nice positive click when that happens. Um, make sure that they get, get seated properly. And then I'm very gently, very gently uh, just cinching these down. And then what I'll do is I'll manually go in and tighten them up. Uh, I don't like using power tools on stuff like this. I just feel more comfortable being able to feel how much pressure I'm putting on things. So that's just me. I don't know the torque spec for this, honestly. Uh, I just torque it down until it's nice and snug. Um, you can kind of feel when you remove them how it should go and then put it back to the same. Uh, that's a good rule of thumb in a lot of cases, if it's done right the first time. Uh, and now I'm putting the ground wires back on and spinning the caps, uh, these top nuts back in. Again, uh, always working systematically so I don't miss any steps or forget anything or leave something undone or loose. Um, and I'm just going to uh, hand tighten them down all the way and then I'll go back again with the 10 millimeter wrench, uh, socket actually in this case, and, uh, and tighten them back up again. And these don't need to be super tight, just enough to really sort of uh, lock in that ground wire. All right, so uh, this is the O2 sensor that I was talking about. The top O2 sensor, uh, unplug it. And you can tell it's the one that you would need to unplug. It's the rear one. It goes to the back of the uh, downpipe. The bottom one, in my case, has a shorter wire that goes in right before the turbo. So you want the one that goes to the downpipe and just unplug it. Now, I am using some electrical tape to keep crud from getting in and out of there. And so now... 
Why am I doing this? That's a great question. Let me explain it to you. So Ed uh, Sussman from EQT put on Facebook in the, uh, the EQT uh, group. I can't remember the name of the group right now. Um, but he put back in 2019, I want to make folks aware of a small issue and general recommendation I make for all stage two and higher cars I tune via Cobb. With catless, high flow, catted, and O2 spacer downpipes, the ECU will slowly add extra fuel at heavy load and will end up running fairly rich over time. This is a function of the rear O2 sensor being used to determine cat efficiency. Since the factory cats are not in place, it gets confused and continues to add fuel. I've made Cobb aware of this issue and hopefully we will have a software solution eventually. But in the meantime, I recommend that people unplug the rear O2 sensor and leave it unplugged. The easiest place to do this is under the hood at the firewall. You will find two connectors here. Disconnect the black one only. In my case, they're both black. Top one is the one. Uh, and you can, like I said, it's easy to trace to find out which one goes to the rear you know, of the downpipe. After doing this, I also recommend reflashing your latest map to reset any learning the ECU has done. Once this is done, your air fuel ratios will remain consistent. And so that is the story. Now, Cobb has not done anything to change that. I verified with Ed just today that this is still an issue. If you have a uh, aftermarket downpipe and a stage two and higher tune, you need to still unplug this. It's not an instant thing. It's one of those things that over time, it's going to start running richer and richer and richer. So uh, the solution is to fix that. Anyway, so that is why we are where we are. And uh, again, if you're running somebody's tune and they give you advice specific to your tune and vehicle situation, it's probably a good idea to follow that advice. And then I'm just reflashing my existing tune. It turns out it's actually a lot faster to do this than it is to unplug the battery to reset all the learning. It literally took like two or three minutes tops to uh, reflash my current tune. Uh, if you already have the tune installed, it's really fast. In fact, this is real time. Like I didn't speed this up. This is how fast the flash went. Like it was crazy fast. Anyway, guys, that is it. That's my story. Uh, that is installing the RS7 spark plugs. And yeah. Unplugging the O2 sensor. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.